Welcome, hello and welcome to another edition of Weekly Motorsport on Gareth Tom speaking to you from my bedroom. Today we've got three MotoGP, a debacle in the Formula One kinda. Review WEC hypercars. Review Monaco Pre and IndyCar. So First off, let's start at Monaco. The Epre, first one on the full Monaco circuit, almost full because the chicane is different. <coughs> and I have to say that was a brilliant race. That's one of the best Epre's in recent memory. For me, had done the right decision in my mind to race on the Grand Prix layout. I wish they would have done it fully and given us the exact same layout because then it, we would know the difference on that time. Formula 1 and Formula E with the same layout, although Formula E were slower. Now, from one change to another, World Endurance, Spa. First race are high because some people were disappointed about the cars. Just to mention, the road going cars are also used for racing, except from that they're modified to be with FIA walls. The FIA are the governing body of World Motorsport. Obviously, that is basically what it has to be done. Before I do more into the video, subscribe to YouTube, Daymotion, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll give you more posts, more videos, and you guys can enjoy more of them. So, about uh, World Endurance, it was the first of a six race season. Once again, Toyota won. Next race will be in June at Portimao, Portugal, on the date where they should have been at Le Mans. That's been put back to August. In between that, they've got Monza in July. They've got Japan in September and Bahrain in November. Six races instead of eight because of the pandemic, with budgets being a concern to everybody. Next one on the list is IndyCar. Got the road course at Indianapolis this weekend. Practice and qualifying on Friday, the race is on Saturday. Change of from most races because Indianapolis has got its own unique format for the road course. What happens at 500, no one knows. We know spectators will be allowed in the ground. We don't know if they'll be allowed, but if they are, then we can expect a limit of fans because in October, 10,000 fans were allowed. For the 500, we know 40% capacity, which is 135,000, the biggest event since the pandemic started. Obviously, we still do not know, obviously, what's going to happen next. But the previous round of Texas, which was a double header, I have to say it was unnecessary to have a double header. And the racing on both days was shit. Shit, shit, shit. From the start to the finish. Unnecessary for a double header. Should have been Saturday night instead of two days. Personally, they should have had one or two more overs like Atlanta or Charlotte. And then we wouldn't be in a mess like this. About, uh, what was it? Uh, MotoGP. Heading into Le Mans on the Bugatti version of the Le Mans circuit, uh, Franco Bagnaia leads the title race, but the French uh, people would want one man, to, two people to go ahead: Johan Zarco and Fabio Quartararo. Quartararo basically still should have, well, and about Quartararo, he should have won in Spain. Had his arm issues not. Uh, cause problems. The arm pump is right here. Obviously, it is going to be quite interesting to see if everything goes in France. Formula One. Will Turkey go ahead? That's the question mark. A couple, well, about just under a week ago, Turkey was put on the wed list. Of countries 
into the UK. Gunter Steiner said it's not feasible to have everyone six weeks on the road. And I personally agree with him on that. Will the Turkey go ahead? No one knows. Azerbaijan's ruled out a date swap. I can't see, it. see that happening. Personally, I don't think it will go ahead, Turkey. We know that the Champions League final has been moved to Porto with a fan limit. We know that some sports have been moved around because of UK red lists. So, that's all I've got to say. I'm Gareth Thomas. I'll be back next Friday. Uh, there might be more content around. I will do a special preview show for the Indy 500. But anyway, I'm Gareth Thomas. Remember to subscribe to all of these. And this is Weekly Motorsport, Gareth Thomas. And it's goodbye.